Hello everyone and welcome to the Mortuary. I am the Mortician and today I have Black Metal for Beginners. Um, I'm super, super, super excited for this. Uh, black Metal is actually one of my favorite subgenres of metal. Um, I just like the aggressiveness, the darkness, and the atmosphere. Uh, so we're going to hop right into this. I'm super excited. But before we do hop right into this, I have uh, Discord now. Um, it's mainly a metal server, um, but there's actually some comic book. There's actually a comic book, movies, and video game section. So if you guys want to come come to the Discord, you know, you can have a conversation with me and some of the other guys and talk about metal or maybe comic books and stuff. So please link in the description uh, to my Discord. Now. Getting into black metal. Um, this is probably one of the most abrasive genres of metal pretty much ever. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, its lyrical themes and the way in which it's played. There's tons and tons and tons of tremolo picking. Um, it, it, ha it really likes to use dissonant chords and, and, and uh, scale structures to really bring home the evilness um, and it's an absolutely outstanding piece of uh, style of metal um, if you can stand that kind of stuff. So to start with, we're going to start with something that once again, just like death, the death metal for beginners I did. This is something that I myself don't really consider black metal. Um, a lot of people do. They kind of walk this gray area because they were the first to really coin the term. And that's uh, Venom. Welcome to Hell. Um, this is more heavy metal than it is black metal in my opinion a lot of people would disagree with me but that's just how it is they have a lot more of a heavy metal influence than they do black metal but these guys were kind of the first band that really delved into like um uh satanism and their lyrics and evil and just had these really really evil once again uh guitar structures and and really abrasive drum tracks uh, even even the vocals on these records are pretty. I wouldn't call them like scree like screams or screeches, but it's just a very abrasive, low kind of singing. And it, 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 it's just such a great record for anyone who's starting out because once again, this is the point where black metal is just starting to pick up. Um, so you're not going to get these really wild, raspy uh, screams. Um, yeah, it's a great place. Once again, if you like Motorhead, you'll probably like Venom. If you like anything along the lines of Motorhead, honestly, you probably will like Venom regardless of the lyrical content. It, it's pretty, pretty good in my opinion. Next, <clears throat> we pick it up once again with Mystifier's Gosha. These guys, um, now, this being said, this transition from Venom to Mystifier is a gigantic one. Um, and that's largely due to the fact that there is no real slowly kicking it up with black metal. It's zero to 100. There is no such thing as in between. There are no numbers or, 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 or anything in between. Um, but Mystifier kind of has this weird, almost doomy element to a lot of their music, especially on songs like an El Elizabethan uh, Devil Worshippers Prayer Book. A lot of them take elements from Doom uh, as well as being straight up black metal. So once again, it's a little more tolerable than just going straight for that really raw, really fast, uh, aggressive sound. And you could probably stand this a bit more than you could stand, you know, like Emperor or something like that. The vocals are also much more aggressive. Um, there are definitely... I, I would call it almost like a death metal vocal, almost. I wouldn't call it straight death metal, um, but a lot of people, I think a lot of people like to consider Mystifier as like a proto-war metal, which I'm not going to get into that. There's going to be a separate crossover episode for that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit more accessible than a lot of the other stuff. And even if you don't like black metal, a lot of people agree that this record is really good. So this is once again another great starting place because once again um you have that fast aggressiveness of like second wave black metal but once again this is an album that can can take a second and slow it down and build atmosphere because that's that's a lot of what black metal is it's, it's a lot of atmosphere next uh once again this is like completely completely the you know the hundred um and that's demancy's Fosty and dawn and within the sylvan realms of frost 
This is where black metal, I mean, I could have picked anything for this last one. Um, you know, yeah, I, I could have easily picked something like Mayhem or Burzum or something like that, but honestly, I don't really own any of those records because I really never found anything too special with them. Um, I liked them a lot when I started, but as I started to get into more and more black metal, I kind of realized how kind of mediocre a lot of that stuff was. Uh, but Demon C has this, this is the point where black metal gets it, you know, this kind of sticks true to the, the crappy mixing of black metal, because it honestly sounds like someone put a tape recorder into a bucket and then put the bucket in the center of the room. Yeah, you know, um, very abrasive mixing, you know, the vocals are harsh, they're, 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 yeah, this is the, the raspy, high-pitched screaming that, that black metal has become so, you know, known for. Uh, the, the, the guitars are just fast as fuck to the drums. It's like pretty much all blast beats. We went over what a blast beat uh, last episode was. Um, and it's just pure fucking aggression. It's, it's probably the most, I would say it's probably the worst mixed on here, definitely. Um, but it's, it's really good. So, go over once more the gradient we have here. Three at records, the gradients that so we have. Venom's Welcome to Hell, Mystifier, and these two Demonsi. I think these are actually demos in an EP, uh, but Demonsi's Fosty and Dawn and Within the Sylvian Realms of Frost. Now, this point is me just going over uh, different subgenres of the subgenre of black metal um, and giving you my thoughts on things. And the first thing I wanted to start off with was actually mellow, melodic black metal. I kind of went over what melodic death metal was in the death metal episode, but I don't feel like I did it super justice. Basically, the idea of putting melodic in front of or in front of like any kind of uh, you know like death metal or black metal is that basically it adds a, a, a certain softness to it. It can almost be in a lot of cases when you have melodic in front of anything, it becomes a much more sadder style of that genre so it keeps the aggressiveness of black metal or death metal but it typically kind of blends in a very sad sometimes almost bleak um uh you know thing into it it's more melodic some things can actually be more upbeat like omnium gatherum uh for example like gods go first that's a melodic death metal song that song is more upbeat so just think of stuff like insomnium and insomnium omnium gatherum and Dissection. Dissection probably has one of the most fucking evil sounds ever, and it's really awesome because they can transition pretty smoothly between this really, really hard shit, like really fast tremolo picking and, and, and just amazing atmosphere, and just slow it down and make some really, really nice melodies. Um, the Storm of Light's Bane is a little bit heavier on this. I could have picked the Somber Lane because that's more of a great example of melodic uh, black metal, but I always reach for Storm of the Light's Bane over the, uh, over, um, the Somber Lane. I don't know why I couldn't think of the Somber Lane. Over the Somber Lane. Um, both are great records. I could have easily put them both here. I do have them both, but I think that Storm of the Light's Bane is better. I think the mixing job is better. I like the song structures more, and lyrically, it's a lot better. Um, that's just my opinion, of course. Next we get into, actually I should probably put this down here. Next we'll get into the subgenre of symphonic black metal. And that's with Karak and Gren's Death Came Through a Phantom Ship. Now, symphonic black metal is basically, this can be done kind of two ways. Karak and Gren is one way in which they use an actual orchestra and, and and blend that orchestra with black metal so it it, it, it creates this all, all over the top randy O's awesome sound um it could be a little bit overwhelming i wouldn't listen to a symphonic black metal record you know often because of the fact that it can be overwhelming but when you're in the mood for like something that that just that that just is like like I said, it's over the top. If you're in one of those moves where you just need some like really grandiose, like you need something with a lot of meaning, like it makes you feel like everything you're doing has meaning, you probably reach for Karak and Gren or a similar uh, symphonic black metal band. Now there, this next thing, this is kind of in company with this. I, I'm using this as more of an example, um, but Emperor's in the Nightside Eclipse also is sort of 
sort of like a symphonic black metal band because they use keyboards and that's another element that can be used in order to create symphonic black metal. So you have either full on orchestras like Croc and Gren's Death Came Through a Phantom Ship or Dimmu Borger's um, uh, Death Call Armageddon and then you have things like Emperor in the Nightside Eclipse or Limbonic's Arts Moon in the Scorpio which use keyboards. Um, it's an absolutely awesome genre of music. Uh, I, I really, really like it. Once again, I don't think I listen to it. I don't listen to it too often because it can be a lot to take in, sort of like technical death metal. Uh, a lot of people that I talk to who listen to metal don't typically listen to just technical death because it's a lot to take in and typically can tire you out very quickly. And that's kind of how I feel about this if this isn't structured right. Next, we get into something a little bit more interesting, um, and that's blackened thrash metal. Um, once again, we kind of went over thrash a little bit in the last video because we talked about Sepultura and how they're more thrash than uh, death. <coughs> now, this is like a perfect blend of, of thrash metal and black metal. Basically, it, it, it has the riff structure um, and intensity of thrash, but it has the guitar tone, the mixing, and the vocal patterns of a black metal band and once again this is a genre that not a lot of not everyone could get into but for those who can get into the genre um there's a lot of shit that, that is just a great genre in my opinion uh, this is a great record to start out with there's also other uh records like skeleton which is breathing the fire which is really really good starting place as well um i could have easily picked either of these but i went with this one ultimately because i've been listening to this one a lot um, it, absolutely great stuff. Um, there's not really much to say about it. I mean, it, 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 it just is what it is kind of thing, you know? And uh, next, um, we have something... See, the problem is, is that I wanted to talk about depressive, suicidal black metal. I don't really have any of those kinds of records laying around. I don't really listen to the genre. Um, so I just kind of picked something that's kind of somewhat similar to it in like at least uh atmosphere and that's kind of crom slayer of lost martyrs and uh crom's slayer of lost Martyr martyrs and the crown of the ancients um this isn't as you know I've, I've looked at it lyrically this isn't depressive suicidal black metal but they kind of have similarities in their you know in the way that they play their guitars and use their instruments they kind of share some similarities um, there are um, some bands that I do know of for DSPM, and that's like uh, Thy Dying Light, I think is one, Zasathor, and um, Make a Change. Um, I can't remember if it's Make a Change and, or Make a Change Kill Yourself. Um, for these bands, once again, lyrically is what really separates them. Lyrically, bands like, you know, like those bands that I mentioned, set them up, the cells apart lyrically they talk about like killing themselves or how hopeless life is um the guitars are really really sad in a lot of cases um some of them can be quite aggressive but honestly a lot of them try to create this very oppressive and and, and, and hopeless atmosphere um and that's kind of what Krom does but he doesn't have the lyrical themes of like um uh dsbm band lastly i had to pick a record that i love of course, because I did the last time. Um, it was probably, I, I, I don't know what to say about this record, because it's just straight up black metal. Like there's no special anything about it. It's it's a little punky at times, but it's just straight up black metal. That is Mardux, Those of the Unlight. There's not really much to say about this record. Like it, everything we've already went over with standard black metal. Can be said about this but there's just something special about this record the the vocals the, the i can't remember the who does the vocals for this but the, the dude who does vocals for this opus nocturne and i think dark endless i think it was also the vocalist for um does a great job he really sets him sets himself apart um great great stuff so thank you guys for watching mortician peace out